So hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. And thank you, Melissa, for speaking. It's great to have you. Uh, I think this is your first time speaking at one of our events. So I'm um, looking forward to your session. I'm sure it'll be great. Um, so Melissa is a career coach, a career and brand coach with over a decade of experience helping clients dig into their value to help them understand who they are, what they want, and how to present themselves. She founded her career coaching business, Melissa Mack Career Coaching, in 2017 and co-founded Divine Plus Design Co. in 2018, a company that supports small, business, uh, small businesses establish their brand and leverage their social media to share their stories. Thanks again for your session today and good luck. Wonderful. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to share my screen in just a moment. Uh, we'll go through a wonderful slide deck that I have prepared, uh, which, of course, I realize means that if I have that up, I'm not going to see the, the chat if you guys have any questions. So um, in which case, as we're going along, if you have questions, just type them in. And then when we come to the end, I'll, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. And then that way I can go through the questions to see if anybody has any. All right. So let's go. All right, so today what I'm talking about is our personal brands um, in relation to the brand of our business that we are building. Um, so the title of this is Build a Brand of Influence with myself, Melissa McFarlane Heidmiller. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is um, why it is that you need to nurture your personal brand just as much um, or perhaps even more than your business brand. And then we're going to look at some ways on how you're going to do it. So the four key areas that we're going to look at are the impact of your brand, understanding your brand, uh, earning respect with your brand, and maintaining your brand. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Alex already did my intro, so I won't add anything else to that other than um, I currently live in Kitchener and my neighbor was just mowing his lawn. It sounds like he's stopped. So hopefully uh, he doesn't kick that up again. <laughs> and I hope that you guys don't hear it as we go along. All right, so the impact of your brand. So when we think about the brand that we have, um, we want to remember that our brand follows us everywhere. It's in everything that we do. It's in the interactions that we have. Um, it really helps to set the expectation of what it's like to work with you, to engage with you, to compete with you, um, and even to socialize with you, right? So our personal brand really helps to differentiate us from from everyone else. And whether or not we're actually working on our brand, we have one, right? What's the, what, what's the quote? I might actually even have it in here somewhere. <laughs> um, if you're not building your brand, you can uh, be assured that somebody else is building that brand for you, right? So what that means um, is that regardless of regardless of us putting in a specific effort on a brand, a brand is being built because we're always being perceived um, perceived by other people through the actions, um, through our intentions, through the way that we speak, through everything that we do helps to create that brand. And as business owners, as the people that are leading the business, when we think about, think about our customers, think about the people that we're hiring, who we are as individuals, as those business owners has a lot to do with with people's decisions on whether or not they want to do business with you or whether that not they want to work with you, right? So we want to think about, sure, you have the brand of your business, but what about the brand of you that that interjects into your business as well? So these are just some different ways that uh, your brand shows up, and I kind of touched on them a little bit there. But um, so when we network, right? So the way that we're presenting ourselves to our network, that helps them to understand uh, who we are and helps them to really know what it is that we're about, right? So it helps them to know if they want to trust you as a valuable network connection, right? So when I'm saying networking, um, I'm talking about both online and in person, right? So, you know, what is it that you're sharing, say, on your LinkedIn? What is it that you're sharing through your online channels? What is it um, that, how are you interacting with your audiences, right? Um, but then also in person, right? So does the, the person that you're presenting at a networking event, does that line up with the person that you're presenting on your online channels, right? How is it that um, that you greet people? How do you... I'd say shake their hands, but we're not really handshaking right now. <laughs> so how do you elbow bump, right? <laughs> um, how is it that you greet those people? How are the conversations with you? How do you look, right? Um, all of those pieces we want to think from networking for both online um, and in person. Um, and it, the, the, the way that we're 
interacting and participating and engaging really helps the other person get to know whether or not that they want to count you as someone that's in their network that that they want to be connected with. So then from that business aspect, right? So yes, you built your business. So there's a strong chance that your business brand is aligned with your personal brand. A lot of times we can't help it, right? A lot of who we are really goes into the business that uh, that we've built. And whether it's intentional or not intentional, that's just the way that it is a lot of the times, right? So the way that we interact and the way that we behave helps people know what to expect when they're going to do business with you, right? So like, I'm, like I was saying with networking, that helps them to understand who you are as that individual, um, as that person. And then how does that transfer into business, right? Are you, um, are you that person that, um, that they know that they can come to when they need troubleshooting? Are you that person that, um, that kind of has that, that, that mentorship, mentoring kind of aspect? Are you that person that's like solidly trustworthy, right? What, what is it going to be like to do business with you and your brand helps to solidify for that? Um, and then next we're looking at career. So our career goals, they grow and they change, right? So your business is likely going to do the same thing. And you might actually even outgrow your role in your business, right? So your personal brand helps others understand where you fit and how you can adapt, right? So I'm actually going to take myself for an example in uh, in this scenario on career. So when I look at the span of of my career, let's just say for the past uh, for the past decade or more, my career has mostly focused around working in uh, working in either career development roles or working in marketing, and it culminated in me setting up uh, setting up businesses, but. Uh, and now I'm actually transitioning out of business and back into paid employment. Um, but uh, what that what we think about in our brand when it comes to our career is that people get to know you for certain aspects, right? They get to know you um, for being someone that's interested in in a particular something or someone who's always uh, passionate about a particular problem that's going on in the world and. These are things that kind of fit outside the box of a job description, right? So then they might look, they might be following you and see the progression of you through your career, through your business, as you potentially change what your business is about, or as you change what your role is in your own business, or maybe, maybe, you know, you sell your business and you start a new one. Our brand helps them to understand how it is that you've navigated to those different points throughout your career and why it makes sense. So when we look at understanding your brand, so we want to, this, this is the quote that I said before that I thought would be in here. Um, if you aren't out there actively building your brand, you can be sure that somebody else is doing it uh, for you, right? So you, because our, your brand is a clear representation of who you are and what it is that you're about. So I'm just going to pop the screen down for a second and just make sure that I don't have any comments and I don't. So that's good. Okay, uh, so another quote here. So your personal brand is a promise to your clients. It's a promise of quality, consistency, competency, and reliability, and that's by Jason Hartman. So the one thing that I always stress about, uh, about brand, whether it's a business brand or whether it is a personal brand, and that is, that's consistency. That is the big thing, right? That we want to be delivering a particular experience to people. We want them to know what to expect. Um, and we can do that through that consistency. So making sure that we're constantly showing up in the same sort of capacity, right? I'm not saying that every single time it has to be the exact same thing. But when you look at uh, when you when you look at your actions overall, when you look at the brands that you're building overall, you kind of want to make sure that they're hitting, let's just say, on the same value set or something along those lines so that you, you don't want to pop up one day and be completely different. And people are going to wonder, OK, what the heck is going on with uh, what's going on with Jason here? I don't understand. It, does he have someone, you know? doing this for him now and they've kind of stuffed it up or, you know, something going on in his life that we need to be concerned about. Um, so from that aspect, that consistency really, really matters when it comes to that brand. 
So then how do we, of course I've clicked on it. There we go. Um, so how do we figure out what it is that's in our brand? And, and these three things here, this is what's going to help us to understand um, understand our brand, understand how do we want to shape that personal brand of ours, um, and what are the kinds of things that we should be, be pushing out there to help people see. So when we think about, uh, before I go into this, I'm just saying when we think about the brand that we're building um, and sharing our brand, it, remember that we can still maintain privacy about who we are and, and in our lives, and it's more or less just picking out um, particular slivers of ourselves that we feel comfortable in sharing with a wider audience to help support the, the building of that personal brand. Um, there was a, a great line that I heard, I think it might have been from Amy, Amy Porterfield, uh, where she was sharing, she was on an airplane and uh, the person beside her started asking all these questions about her and, and she realized in that moment that Whatever you, whatever you feel comfortable telling a stranger on an airplane, that's the kind of thing that, that you should be looking at for sharing your per, in sharing about yourself in a personal brand. If you don't feel comfortable telling, some, telling that person on an airplane something, then do not be posting it or sharing it or behaving in that capacity um, that would contribute to your personal brand. Okay, so uh, the first one that we're going to look at are values. Um, so our values, when we think about what are the things that we believe in, what motivates us, what inspires us, um, values, they can you can look at personal values, you can look at career values or professional values, figure out what some of those things are. Um, and I really like picking, you know, picking maybe four or five values that really, really resonate with you um, and kind of making sure that that you're aligning the the content that you're putting out there, the the behaviors that you're having, all of the things that you're doing align with those particular values, right? So just like in a business, right? When we're building out our business and we're thinking about what are the values of my business, I want to make sure that my interactions, uh, the interactions of my business, the decisions of my business line up with these values. Same kind of thing, but we're doing it with ourselves. Um, a really great way to tap into what some of those values are if you kind of struggle on thinking, what are my values? Um, one, <laughs> Google for a list of values, <laughs> just so that you can really get the good concept of like, what exactly are uh, some values? Um, but don't just look at the list and pick things out. Uh, rather, get that list of values and then ask yourself two questions. Ask yourself, when was a time um, when I felt completely content um, and describe that time to yourself uh, as detailed as you can and then look at that scenario that you've written out and ask yourself what values have been met in that moment and then do something on the flip side um, of a time when you were really frustrated or upset and explain that moment to yourself, detail it out and ask yourself what values were not being met and that just kind of helps to solidify your uh, solidify the importance of those particular values to the, for yourself. So it's a really uh, a really different way that I've found, but a very effective way to help somebody identify what kind of values that they have. Um, next, we have interest and expertise. So when we think about um, what kind of information that we want to be sharing and projecting, and how do we want to position ourselves as uh, as an expert or whatnot. Uh, we want to look at those interest areas and expertise areas. So looking at what are the topics that you're an authority in, what experiences can you leverage, um, and what are the trends that you love to talk about. So let's say, you know, you can look at, you can look at, um, if your business is something that that you're very knowledgeable about, which on the one hand, I would really hope that it is, but I know there's uh, other scenarios where that's that's not the case. Um, you can you know look at those topics that's relevant to your business, look at the topics that are relevant to your in, to your industry, um, but then also look at some areas that are just simply of interest to you, right? So um, looking at those areas, how can you establish yourself through, you know, whether you're sharing uh, content that's already been created, whether you're, you're creating um, new content in that space. So, you know, whether it's doing things like presenting at conferences or at, um, at seminars, leading workshops, uh, attending networking events and offering to, uh, to do the 10-minute the 
learning session or something like that, or what are different ways looking at places where you can be writing and submitting articles and whatnot. Uh, what are different outlets where you can grab, kind of grab the stage, so to speak, um, and demonstrate, uh, demonstrate your interest and expertise. And then the next one we have are behaviors and languages. Um, so not languages, but language. <laughs> uh, what are your interactions like with people in person and online? How do you talk with people and what impression do you make, right? So when we're looking, when we think about that a little bit deeper, we want to think about, uh, and I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, our interactions with people online and in person, it should be the same. Uh, we should make sure that the way that um, that someone experiences us online, if they ever get to, to meet you in person, that they're not going to have a completely different experience of you. Because that's going to, one, it's probably going to be a disappointment for you. I don't know about you guys, but um, have you have you ever had someone in your industry that you're connected with online? You guys essentially have that online relationship, you know, where you guys you comment on each other's posts um, or, or whatnot, and then you actually get to meet them in person, and you're like, oh, Oh, well, this was uh, very not what I expected at all, right? Where you feel like you've built that rapport with them and then all of a sudden it's kind of tanks, right? <laughs> so we want to just think about the way, make sure that both of those experiences align. Uh, we want to look at the way that you talk to people. Uh, so the, the example that I'm going to use on this is, you know, are you a, are you more of a, a casual uh, a casual person? Are you more professional? Um, how do you how do you, how do you talk? Do you are you someone that uses contractions when you talk? Or are you someone that doesn't use contractions when you talk? Um, if anybody's a fan of Brooklyn Nine Nine, <laughs> uh, Captain Holt, I I think it was like his tell or something like that. When he when he lies, he uses contractions, so he would say can't when he lies or don't. Um, otherwise, every other time he would say, I cannot do that or I do not do that or something something like that, right? Um, I know it's a little bit of a, a silly example, but things that are that minuscule, when we think about the way that we talk to people, if it's when we look at the consistency of the way that we're talking to people and how that goes, people pick up on that, right? So if you, um, if you're the person that doesn't ever use contractions when you're speaking, then let's just say when you're writing stuff and putting it out there, don't use contractions um, for that written content either, right? We want to always think about how how it is that that we're speaking, the kind of language that we're using, and how are people perceiving that, and and making sure that we're always creating that consistent experience for them. Um, and then uh, just thinking, right? So what's the uh, the impression that we're making? through the behaviors and language. All right, so next we have earning respect with your brand. And I'm just gonna pop my screen down for a second and there's no questions. Okay, uh, earning respect with your brand. So be someone that your network wants to follow. Um, so you have the power to choose how you present yourself, right? So we can spend that time, we can go, oh, I just noticed that I didn't change any of the pictures in here and they're all repeated. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh, what am I saying? Um, you have the power to choose how to present yourself. We already know, you know, we can figure out what are our values. We can figure out those interests. We can figure out the stuff that we want to be sharing. Um, we can look at the way that we are interacting with people, making sure that that's, uh, that's all top notch. Um, and but then that next step is making sure that we are behaving in a way that um, that that network wants to follow. Right. So when we look at how we're presenting ourselves, we can choose authenticity, integrity and helpfulness. So that helps those three areas helped to build uh, build up the respect with our network. Right. So when we're looking at authenticity, this is simply just being you, making sure that you're being true to who you are, uh, making sure that the way that you're presenting yourself is that accurate reflection, because um, I mean, we're a skeptical society and I feel like, you know, as the years go on, we get we get more and more skeptical and a little bit more jaded. Right. We're always ready to to sniff out the people that um, that are not being authentic. And, you know, particularly with our uh, access to 
to, to social media and all these things, right? People are just so ready to sniff you out if you're not being authentic and they're ready to tell people that you're not. So you might as well just avoid the chance of, of someone digging stuff up and saying, hey, you're not really who you say you are. So just go ahead and be you and be unapologetically you because whoever you are and however you are, you're perfect the way that you are. So just be you. Um, and then the next one is integrity. So when we're looking at integrity, just making sure that you stand behind what it is that you say and you do, making sure that um, that just being a good good human being, right? If you say you're going to do something, then do something. Be a person of your word. Um, and the last one is helpfulness. So offering support, uh, remembering that remembering that building your network, having all these relationships, it's always a two way street, right? We can't always keep we can't always just expect others to be doing things for us and asking. We need to make sure that we're extending out as well. So being helpful for people, offering the support, directing people to what they need, providing resources, tools, and advice. Um, and, you know, not going overboard on it, but, you know, if you, if you hear someone saying that, you know, they need X and you happen to know somebody that has X, you know, voice, put your voice in there and say, hey, you know what, I can make that connection for you, or I can do this for you, right? Because when we're helpful, people um, people respect us when we're being helpful, um, but then they are also going to help us in, in return too, right? So um, being someone that they see valuable um, is, is all tied into that. All right, so then last we have maintaining our brand. So just remembering that our brand is always out there. It's always happening. Comes back to the whole notion of if you're not actively building your brand, somebody else is doing it for you. Um, remembering that our actions are always being perceived by others out there. Um, so we, we might as well continue to make sure that we maintain our brand. And how do we do that? Um, so that consistency, there's that word again. Um, consistency not only helps to establish your brand um, and it establishes your authority and your value, um, but it also helps to avoid confusion, right? So just making sure that uh, all of those ways that we're interacting, whether it's online or on person, uh, in person, <laughs> um, that we're always making sure that it comes back to to who we are, making sure that it connects with those values, those interests, making sure that we're doing it with, with authenticity and integrity, right? And then uh, being purposeful, so remembering that every action counts. Be mindful in the content that you share, in the way that you interact with people and the actions that you take. Ask what purpose is being served and if it connects with who you are and what you want. Remembering sometimes that uh, no action is better than um, than messy action, right? Um, if if you're about to do something and it doesn't make sense, then step back and hold off, evaluate, see if there's a better way to come at it, and and then taking those steps because people are you know our our audience is watching as the the leaders of businesses that that we're building people are watching our actions um, and it reflects on you but it's also reflecting on your business and it's reflecting on the people that um, that are connected with you um, and then checking in is the the last tip on that so there's two areas to check in on yourself and your brand um, so have you as an individual have you changed at all? Does your brand still accurately reflect, reflect you? Have you strayed from the mark in how you are presenting yourself versus how you want to be perceived, right? So I recommend um, actually doing a check-in probably about twice a year, just um, doing that quick reflection, go through everything, see what's changed. I mean, during the past year and a half, I'm sure a lot, a lot has changed for many of us. Um, so figuring out, do you need to be adjusting um, the topics that you're talking about? Do you need to adjust? Um, do you need to, to shift the direction of the of your network a little bit? You know, if maybe if you've shifted from one uh, from one uh, customer base to another customer base, do you do you need to start to learn more about that new customer base? Understand some of the things that that they're into, so that you can kind of start informing and educating yourself on those areas too and um, and start shifting your brand to align with that new target, um, et cetera. All right, so that takes us to the end of building a brand of influence. And I thank you all very much for your time. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And there we go, now I'm back here.
So if anybody, anybody has any questions, I am more than happy to answer on anything. We've got about five minutes left. And um, yeah. If nobody does have a question right now, you are all certainly welcome to uh, to reach out to me. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as uh, Melissa McFarland Heidmiller, um, or you can um, email me. I can just pop my email into the chat here. It's Melissa at melissamack.com. I love talking brand, so I'm happy to, to do that. Oh, you're very welcome, Kieran. I uh, I hope that that you enjoyed it and found something helpful in there. Listen. Hi, um, Alex. Hey, yeah, I just want to jump on quickly and say thanks for your presentation. It was really great. Lots of great information. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there is any questions right now. Um, so I guess maybe if we just want to wrap up, I guess I just had one maybe quick question. If if someone is like going to take one thing from your presentation, what would that one key thing be that you'd really want to hammer home? I would say is understand uh, understand who you are and making sure that that you're communicating that consistently. I think Great. the consistency piece is, is the most important part when it comes to our brand. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks again for your presentation and thanks for sharing that uh, key takeaway. Just to let everyone know, so um, there is a recording of the presentation available. So Melissa, if you want a copy or if anyone watching would like a copy, certainly just let myself or Melissa know and we'd be happy to send that over to you. Thanks again, Melissa. It was really great. No problem. Everybody enjoy the rest of the uh, the conference. Bye. Thanks. Bye.